Nunuk Atak Dangi is so Christa de Mim Salamabuner. Ni Tatsaki, Asunuk Dun Sarasadamdi. Almighty God, I want to thank you for this time that you have granted to me. And Lord, as I stand before your children to share your word, Father, I surrender my life into the hands of yours. I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart and use me as a mouthpiece of yours so that whatever I speak, Almighty God, I will speak according to your will. May I also pray for all those who will listen to the message of it. May you govern their hearts, O Lord, minister to them so that they will be able to hear your still small voice. Lord, we want to surrender all of us afresh into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I wanted to share with us a story of Albert Einstein. In 1952, Albert Einstein was in a Princeton University where he was delivering a lecture. Then there came a doctoral student who asked him a question and he asked the famous scientist, what is there left in the world for original dissertation research? I repeat, what is there left in the world for original dissertation research? With considerate thought and profundity, Einstein replied, find out about prayers. Somebody must find out about prayers. What is this mystery prayer that Einstein wants someone to research on it? The Bible records so many mysterious power of prayer. And among so many, I would just like to uh, share with us some few things. In Exodus chapter 32, verses 11 through 14, we would see Moses praying for the life of Israelites. And because Moses prayed, God saved the people from his righteous anger. And not only that, we will also see in Joshua chapter 10, verses 12 to 14, Joshua stopped the sun in the middle of the battle. And we still marvel at how uh, Jonah prayed to God in the belly of the fish, wrestling his way out for life. These are some mysterious things that has happened. Testimonies after testimonies, miracles after miracles that we see, and the Bible has recorded a lot about that. Today, if you and I wanted to understand what this prayer is, we need to critically understand what and how the Bible views prayer. What according to you is prayer? Does prayer make any difference in your life? Does prayer make any difference in your life? F.B. Mayer said, the tragedy of life is not unanswered prayer, but unoffered prayers. Does prayer make any difference in your life? Let's quickly look at how Bible says about prayer. When we look at the Bible, we can understand that prayer is worship that includes all the attitudes of human spirit in its approach to God. The Christian worship we worship God when we adore, when we sing, when we confess us, when we praise us, and when we bring our supplications to Him in prayer. We cannot be a good Christian and not pray. Prayer is a pipeline of communication between God and His people. The Bible has a lot to say about prayer. Nearly 50 lengthy prayers are recorded in the Bible, along with there are so many short, numerous prayers that the Bible has recorded. The Bible makes it very clear that prayer is intended as a line of connection from the heart of the praying person to the heart of God. I tell you, Jesus himself practiced prayer. And Jesus urged his disciples, and he is urging us to imitate him and to practice prayer and make it a daily existence. Jesus' prayer represented prayer that is sincere and best. You know, even those people who don't believe in the existence of God, those people who do not love God, those people whose hearts are hardened have the longing of possibility to communicate with God. 
And I want to share you this experience of mine. When I was practicing uh, counseling, I was assigned a particular ward in the hospital. And whenever I visited the ward, I will see people, most of them frustrated, struggling with unanswered prayers, disappointed over why they have to go through such pain. And one of those patients was a patient from Bangladesh who came all the way to India to, for the surgery. He had lost his leg and he was so angry. And when I went and said, hi, sir, how are you doing? He was so angry and he said, are you a Christian? He started talking about God. He started talking about different beliefs. He started talking about religion and he was so angry, so angry. He started sharing so many things. I was taken a little aback. I was a little nervous, but I stood by him and I listened to him. After all his frustrations was poured out, I asked him, sir, can I pray for you? And he, he gave me the permission to pray, so we prayed together. After a prayer, I saw tears in his eyes. I saw peace. I saw joy in him. And why I'm sharing this experience is I've experienced that prayer can accomplish so many things that no other things can do. Sometimes so many correct answers cannot satisfy the heart of people, but prayer does. Prayer can accomplish a lot of things. Prayer has power to change life. Prayer has power to bring healing. How often do you pray? How often do you call unto God? When was the last time that you have prayed fervently? What was the need and how did God respond to that prayer? Are you struggling with prayers? Are you struggling to, to obey the commandment of God, to discipline ourselves in prayer? I wanted to tell you there is power in prayer and that we are supposed to be praying consistently. Have prayer make any difference in your life? I want to ask you this. Have prayer make any difference in your life? If you haven't felt any difference or if you are struggling to experience it, I want to encourage us to keep our prayer fervent and persistent. If you want to have a difference of prayer, have a fervent prayer, have a persistent prayer. To tell this, there are so many people who have gone through a pain of unanswered prayers. There are so many people who have abandoned their faith because they struggled with an unanswered prayers. And it's true. And C.S. Lewis, he shared his testimony and said, he struggled so much with an unanswered prayer that he abandoned the Christian faith when he was 13 years of age. It was after 15 years or so when he, he, he made Christ, he said, he was in a philosophical, rather embarrassing moment that he has to kneel down and pray and trust the same God who have abandoned him long time ago. And in his prayer, he was praying to God to save his brother who was in Shanghai during the Japanese war. There are people who have abandoned their faith because they did not see results of prayer. And to be honest, I have gone through that as well. I have gone through the sense of frustrations and rejections, and of course, even confused over prayers. I want to tell you this. I have prayed throughout my high school for a college and when it was about time for me to get admission, the college um, said that I cannot be getting the admission in the same year. It was very, very disappointing. It was frustrating. I was questioning God. All this time I have worked hard. All this time I have, I have been trying to do my best because I wanted to get into that college. Where else I did not get. 
And not only that, my, my prayers went unanswered when my dad went to be with the Lord. I always prayed that my, uh, my dad will leave and see me getting married. My dad will see that my children grow. I have asked God for his life, but God took him home early. There were times I did not understand why God was doing those things to me. There were questions, questions after questions for so many unanswered prayers. But I am thankful to the Lord for those experiences today, for I have experienced that the Lord does everything best for me. Despite the failures that I have experienced in an unanswered prayer, I want to tell you that prayer has always remained the most important part in my life. It has sustained me. Prayer has sustained me in most difficult situations that I have gone through. I want to tell you this. I continue to pray because I believe and trust not only in the power of prayer, but I believe in the character and the wisdom of God as well. You know, when we pray, God must be the focus of our prayer. God alone must be the focus of our prayer. And if God remains the focus of our prayer, I tell you, it will sustain us, it will sustain our faith, and we will continue to persevere in our walk with Him and in, in our prayers. Dr. Ravi Zacharias said, I think the reason uh, we sometimes have the false sense that God is far away from us is because that is where we have put Him. We have kept him at a distance. And then when we are in need and call on him in prayer, we wonder where he is. He is exactly where we left him. Where is God for you today? Is he somewhere close to you? Is he there in your heart or you have placed God somewhere else and you're struggling to call him? The word of God says in Luke chapter 13, Jesus said, Jesus tells us that God will give us the Holy Spirit, his indwelling presence to those who ask for it. If you and I want God to be the focus of our life, if you and I want God to be the sustaining factor in our prayer, in our faith, let us ask for this indwelling Holy Spirit in us. Because one, one of the ultimate result that we look for in a prayer is that Jesus intends us to make a home for him in our heart. A home for Jesus in our heart. Is Jesus living in your heart today? Are you disappointed? Are you frustrated with an unanswered prayers? Be encouraged with this Bible verse. It says in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, now he was telling this to telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart. The Bible says, keep praying and do not lose your heart. In Luke chapter 11, verse 9, it says, So as I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened unto you. The Lord who knows the counts of our hair on our head, he knows that your heart's desire. He knows my heart's desire. And he is willing to give the best one to us. Will you continue to sustain your faith and persevere in your prayer and not lose heart, but keep asking him? I would want to close with a testimony of um, a very renowned Indian Christian and his non other than boxing. He was born in Punjab in a Sikh family, and he regularly visited Gurudwaras. When he was in a school, he was presented a Bible. And when he got a Bible, he was so angry, and he said he, 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 he tore that Bible into pieces. Now, when years later, he was in King's College in London, and while an engineering student in Canada, he receive Christ as his personal savior. He died in 2000, in the age 97, but he has a testimony and I would like to share with all of us. 
you know, the story says that he was traveling across India and on a very long journey, one time with one of his companion, a friend, he was stopped by a stranger and the stranger challenged him and said, can you pray for the rain in this area? Can you pray for the relief of rain in this area? Bak Singh looked at the man and said, if it happened, if I pray for the rain, will you believe in Jesus Christ? And this man reluctantly took some time and said, yes, I will. When this man, when Bak Singh was about to get into his knees and pray for the rain, you know, his friend who's traveling with him said, can you wait not to pray now until we reach our next stop? Until we reach our next stop, can you wait? Can you wait not to pray? Because we did not carry umbrella with us. We did not carry umbrella with us. That's the kind of faith. That's the kind of belief. How is your faith? How, how is your walk with God? Have you experienced numerous of rejections and have gone through unanswered prayer? I want to encourage you, take heart, be courageous. Do not give up your prayer. Do not give up on your faith yet. God is going to work miraculously in your life. Trust in the power of prayer. Today, even as the whole world goes through this pandemic of COVID-19, I am sure that we are all praying in our own homes, in our rooms. We are interceding for the whole world waiting when God is going to erase this sickness. Don't give up your prayer. Let's continue to strive in our prayer for a day will come when God will do wonders because we prayed with all our hearts. John Piper said, prayer is a human act that God has ordained and which he delights in because it reflects the dependence of his creatures upon him. Let us continue to depend on the sovereign God. Let us continue to trust this living God who is the author and the finisher of God. Let us continue to be on our knees and seek the Lord and His will. And let us continue to grow in Him. May God bless all of us.
Sister and brother.